Hi, this is Don Farber with Vineyard Soft Corporation, and I'd like to welcome you to this second training course on the Knowledge Sync Alerts and Workflow Solution. This course assumes that you have successfully downloaded Knowledge Sync, installed Knowledge Sync, and either entered or verified your Knowledge Sync license code. This training course will focus on four steps of initial configuration, starting with the configuration of the Knowledge Sync Windows service. So let's get right to it. Windows services are typically located within your system's control panel. And within control panel itself, services are most frequently located under administrative tools. So we're going to select the option for services, and we're going to look for a service called Knowledge Sync. Do note that if you have installed Knowledge Sync, the service will be called by that same name. If, however, you have installed, for example, Sage Alerts and Workflow, you will see a Windows service called Alerts and Workflow. Now, once we have located the Knowledge Sync service, we're going to right click on it and choose to display the properties of this service. In Properties, you're going to click on the second tab in, Logon. By default, the Knowledge Sync Windows service is configured to log into the application using what's called the local system account. That account typically does not have sufficient privileges to perform all of the functionality that Knowledge Sync requires. And so you need to change that local system account to a real account, typically an account with domain user privileges. Let's click on our Browse button and we'll try using my personal account. Once you select an account, you can choose to check or verify the names to make sure they are legitimate. They are. From here, we can click on OK and simply finish up by specifying the appropriate password information. And one more time. And let's say OK. And now let's attempt to start the Knowledge Sync service. The service has been started successfully. Now, a couple of notes in case you're unable to start the Knowledge Sync Windows service. First of all, check out your Knowledge Sync license code. If you have a license code where the server name, that's the name of the server that Knowledge Sync is installed on, is unknown, the service will not start and you'll need to send an email message to Vineyard Soft Corporation telling us the name of the server that you have Knowledge Sync installed on and we'll regenerate your license code accordingly. If you do have what appears to be a legitimate license code but are still unable to start the Knowledge Sync Windows service, please contact our technical support staff and we'll figure out why that service is not starting. Okay, so we've got our service configured and running successfully we can now exit from Windows Services and proceed with our second step, which is to define the ODBC source that Knowledge Sync is going to use when it connects to and monitors the data within the applications you want Knowledge Sync to monitor. Now, ODBC configuration also is typically found within an application's control panel. I, however, have it here as a desktop shortcut, and so we'll bring it up from here. Now, do note that this is the 32-bit ODBC Device Manager program. Currently, Knowledge Sync requires the use of the 32-bit ODBC program. Don't worry, that program is installed on all Windows 32-bit as well as 64-bit machines. And if you're having any difficulty locating the 32-bit ODBC Device Manager, please go to the Vineyard Soft website and scan our knowledge base for ODBC 32-bit. Also, in regards to ODBC sources, there are two types of sources that can be configured, user sources and system sources. Since Knowledge Sync is running as a system service, it does require the use of a system DSN. Now, for this training session, I'm going to be connecting Knowledge Sync to an ERP application from Sage Software. That application is Sage 100, and in my case, that Sage 100 data is being stored in a Microsoft SQL Server environment. Now, I believe that I already have an ODBC source set up to point to that database, and indeed I do. 
If I didn't, I would choose the option to add this source right now, but since I do, I'm going to click on the Configure button. This source has a name. I'm able to specify the name of the machine on which my SQL Server resides, and if I move ahead, I'm able to specify how we're going to validate connectivity to that SQL Server database. Here we're going to use username and password authentication. So having specified that, we'll click on Next. We're able to specify the name of the Stage 100 SQL Server database that we're connecting to. And once again, Next. We can take all of the ODBC defaults and finish up by clicking on the Finish button and testing this data source to make sure that it is able to successfully connect with, in this case, my Sage 100 SQL database. We'll all say OK to all of these windows, and we're ready to proceed with our third step, which can be done inside of KnowledgeSync, because that is the definition of the email account that KnowledgeSync will use for the sending of email alerts. That's done in the Knowledge Sync Administrator module. We are using the default username of admin and no password, and we come into the Administrator module. We're going to drop down to the Software Setup branch. There's only one option in the Administrator module that you must take in order to get Knowledge Sync running. And again, that is the definition of the email account that Knowledge Sync will use for the sending of alert messages. So having highlighted my email accounts branch, I'm going to go up to the top left of my window and say that I wish to create a new email account. Now KnowledgeSync supports a wide variety of email systems such as Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo Mail, Microsoft Outlook or Exchange-based mail, even hosted Outlook known as Outlook 365. And we do strongly encourage you to have the Knowledge Sync manual open and by your side as you are configuring your email account, particularly in regards to Microsoft Outlook, as that system can be configured itself under a number of different settings as determined by your IT administrator. Personally, I like to make things easy, and so I'm going to choose, in this case, to use my personal Gmail account for Knowledge Sync. So we're going to drop down to the bottom left of this window and ask KnowledgeSync to apply the Gmail default settings for email. I'm left with having to fill out only three fields. The first is my Gmail account name, and that is dfarber64 at gmail.com. We'll specify my password. Yes, this account is going to be active. That will enable me to use it in Knowledge Sync events. And one last item that I need to fill out is the SMTP from name. Once again, looking for my Gmail account name, which is as follows. With all of this filled in, I can click on Save and Close. And now my first thought has got to be, well, did I get everything right? Did I specify my password correctly? Is my email account name correct, etc.? So our next step is to test this email account. Now, I've already configured and started the Knowledge Sync Windows service so I can perform this email test. I'm going to send a test message to my Gmail address, once again, dfarber64 at gmail.com and OK. Right. Now, although you could jump right into Gmail to check to see if that message has been successfully delivered, I'd actually like to use this opportunity to show you a quick peek at another Knowledge Sync module called the Monitor. This is an online audit trail of everything that Knowledge Sync has done and is doing. So we can go into the Monitor and drill down to email delivery. Are there any email messages that are waiting to be sent out? No. Are there any email messages that have been sent today? Yes. In fact, three of them, all tests of our email system. What I'm interested in is the one most recently. Let's take a look at the time when this email message was sent out. 1.03 p.m., and my system clock is saying 1.04, so that sounds like the one that I just triggered. But to be absolutely sure, let's minimize our monitor and let's go into Gmail. So I'm going to open up a web browser. We're going to go to Gmail. 
and there it is. Performing test sent by KnowledgeSync, so I now know that this email sending account has been successfully configured. Good. I can now exit from the administrator, and I have one last step to take. I need to now connect KnowledgeSync with my underlying Sage 100 SQL Server database. And so we are going to start out by opening the KnowledgeSync Navigator. All right. So when you installed KnowledgeSync originally, it came with just a single application defined within it called the sample application. We want to hook up KnowledgeSync to our Sage 100 SQL Server database. Now, if you recall from our first training session, there are event packs, pre-configured collections of events for different applications, among them Stage 100. So we can actually go up to our file menu and say that we want to install an event pack. And I believe that I put that event pack up in my downloads folder. So we're actually going to go and go back a few steps to my C folder. We're going to look at, do, um, not documents, let's try that again, downloads. There we go. And there is my Sage 100 SQL Server event pack. I'm going to double click on that event pack to install it and simply click on the install button. Event packs install in just a couple of seconds. And if I now refresh my list of event branches, I can see my sample application is still here, but so too are all of my branches for Sage 100. Now, this particular event pack is interesting because there are separate branches referred to as applications for the separate modules within Sage 100. So I've now installed the Sage 100 event pack, but I haven't yet connected any of these branches with my underlying Sage 100 SQL Server database. To do so, we need to go into the properties of these branches. So I'm gonna go into the accounts receivable branch, right click and choose properties. And I'm going to say that I wish to create a new connection. So, here we are presented with a list of all of our ODBC data sources. We're going to click on our list button. We're going to look for Sage 100 SQL Server. And here it is, Sage 100 SQL. We're going to specify our appropriate login information. All we need to specify is username and password, all of the following fields of information you can leave with their default values. We're going to say save and close, but before I leave this next window, you may notice that this window of mine looks a little bit differently than yours. And that is because the last three fields of information on this window are new, having been added in version 9.0 of KnowledgeSync, about to be released, which includes a rather exciting new bit of functionality called alert acknowledgments. For right now, however, we can ignore that and focus on basics. So we've now hooked in the Sage 100 accounts receivable branch to our Sage 100 database. But again, we want to confirm that connectivity. So let's expand that branch. Let's look at some of the events within it and let's see if we can confirm that connectivity. I know that in my Sage 100 database, I have invoices that are overdue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna expand that particular event and we're going to go into the query, as the query is what identifies the conditions within Sage 100 that we're looking for. Now, there are separate training courses on the steps of query and event design, but for our purposes right here, we just want to test this query to make sure that it can retrieve records from our Sage 100 database. And so we're going to go to the very last tab called Preview and test it out. The unpaid balance of an invoice is greater than, well, let's say just $10. And with that, we see records from our Sage 100 database. We can see the customers, their invoice numbers, invoice date, due date, and if we scroll to the right, additional fields of information, such as the invoice balance due. In other words, we are successfully connected with and successfully retrieving data from our Sage 100 database. We can cancel from this query. And that ends this training session. We have, just to repeat, 
gone into Windows services and set the Knowledge Sync Windows service to log on using a real user account. We have defined a system ODBC, a 32-bit ODBC source that points to our database that we want Knowledge Sync to monitor. We have gone into the Knowledge Sync administrator module and specified the email sending account that Knowledge Sync will use for the sending of email alert messages. And last but not least, we've installed our event pack, in our case for Sage 100. We have connected that pack with an underlying database. We've gone into a specific event, looked at its query, and made sure that it is successfully retrieving records from our underlying database. At this point, you are ready to start designing additional queries, start modifying existing queries, and start creating Knowledge Sync events of your own. I wish you the best of success with that process. Again, my name is Don Farber with Vineyard Soft Corporation, and I thank you very much for your time and attention.